we'll continue our discussion of optical coherence tomography by thinking about a different way of making the measurements of reflectivity as a function of depth into a tissue. From the previous tutorial, we saw that the detector signal, if you have a path length difference for a single reflector of tau between a reference mirror and the location where the reflector is, that signal uh, goes as the reflectivity of the scatterer and also goes as this function of cosine where you've got the optical frequency nu and the time delay of the flight of the light to the reference mirror versus to the reflector in the tissue. So that dependence is something we're now going to play with a little bit. If we look at what tau equals, tau is the extra amount of time it takes if there was a particular reflecting surface, I'm marking it here in the tissue, if light was to travel to that location and back again, that's the extra time of the time delay here. And that distance x that we travel there from x equals zero to the tissue reflector and back again, the total time delay is going to be the distance 2x divided by the speed of light in the tissue. We've been calling that c sub n this semester for the refractive index n. And not only can we think of tau that way, in new variables, we can think about the optical frequency nu. That's equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength of light in air. And so if we multiply nu times tau in this way, we have the CNs canceling, and we would get that we can also write the detected signal as a function of the inverse wavelength, nu tilde. I'll say that this can be written as CN times nu tilde. That's just equal to one over the wavelength. That turns out to be useful for the way we're going to write this math. So the detected signal as a function of wavelength, specifically as a function of the inverse of the wavelength, as cosine of the extra factor of 2 gives us a 4 pi instead of the 2 pi we saw up there. 4 pi nu tilde, which is 1 over the wavelength, times x, the distance into the tissue. We are now going to pay attention to nu tilde and x. You might be familiar with seeing that two variables multiplying each other inside of the argument of a cosine makes you start thinking about a Fourier pair relationship between these two, and that's exactly what we're going to play with here. So let's sketch out first a plot whose x-axis corresponds to the x variable. So depth x. So now we're going to make plots of what the reflectivity is going to look like. I'm going to say that this value here is zero, right at the left edge here. That corresponds to when the reflector is right at x equals zero. So we have a path length match between the reference mirror and that location. If we have a path length match there, then every wavelength of light, no matter what monochromatic light we shine in, we're going to have a reflectance maximum at that point. And so I'm going to sketch a little line up here to say we have a maximum in the interference signal that we would get. And down here, another envelope to show a minimum. So let me first imagine shining in blue light into this system. So for blue light, at path length mismatch of zero, when the reflector is right x at x equals zero, I will have a maximum. Then as I move this reflector away from x equals zero and into the tissue, the reflectivity, as we saw in the previous video, it's going to undergo oscillations, standard interference term that we see in a Michelson interferometer when we move one reflector, in this case, the reflector inside of the tissue. And so this will have some sort of oscillation as given by this expression here. So for a particular value of nu tilde corresponding to blue light, I will get a sinusoid. And let me draw that. Something like that. Again, it's a maximum when I'm at x equals zero with my reflector. 
If I were to switch to a different wavelength, which I'll encode in red, I will also have a reflection interference maximum at my detector for that color as well. But because I've changed the inverse wavelength, the wavelength's gotten larger, so new tilde's gotten smaller. So I have to have a larger amount of x in order to bring this cosine to go from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to have an oscillation that looks something like this. I've got a longer period before it goes to its... A longer depth has to be traveled by the motion of the reflector before I come back to a maximum for the red versus the blue. So let's hold on to that idea and see where it goes with it for us. Suppose I now make a different sort of plot where instead I'm going to make a plot versus wavelength. So let me first set up the axes for a plot like this. So I'm going to make a plot versus new tilde, the inverse wavelength. And what I'm going to ask is, suppose now, since I'm varying new tilde along my axis, it must be x that I'm holding fixed. So let's first think about a particular depth, and I'm going to cut through this graph here in a place very close to x equals 0. And I'm going to call that cut through A. Okay, so again, we were talking about a reflector that is close to the surface of the tissue, nearly at x equals 0. Well, you'll notice that if I cut through this, I can now make notations on my graph here for the red wavelength and the blue, and the blue wavelength. So since the red wavelength is larger, that means the red inverse wavelength will be smaller. So let me write new red over here and I'll write new blue over here. Those both have tildes. And you can see that at cut through A, both the red and the blue are very near their maximum. If I draw these same max and min guides, like that, and I look at the strength of the signal as a function of wavelength or inverse wavelength, I'm going to get that the red is very near its maximum. I'm going to draw it high up here. And the blue is almost as close to its maximum. Basically the same value, just maybe a tiny bit less. So if I now plot for a reflector at depth A, very close to the surface, how the signal would vary as a function of wavelength, which wavelengths are near their maximum of interference and which are near their minimum, they're all pretty close to their maximum. So I would connect them something like this. It's a small portion of a very long sine wave. Here's the sinusoidal dependence. I'm holding x fixed, so I'm going to have a cosine dependence versus new tilde, and it will look something like this. It's a very slow varying function. These two wavelengths far apart have almost the same value. Stay with me here. If I now make a cut through at a different location here, B, I'm going to choose a place where the blue wavelength is actually at a, a zero value. It's neither at a, it's halfway between a maximum and a minimum. So at that second location, I'm going to have the blue value down here. The red value is about at half. It's about halfway between maximum and zero. So it's about here. If I now try to connect these points with a sinusoid, it's going to look like it, something like this. It's Something like that, not terribly well drawn. But you can see that the period is significantly less than this very broad shape here. So up here for A, we would say slow variation. Slow variation versus new tilde for a reflection for what we'd call a shallow 
reflector. Shallow because it's very close to the surface. This middle is a medium variation versus new tilde for a medium depth reflector. I'm now going to choose one more location and that's going to be a cut through where the blue is near nearing its second maximum but red is near its first minimum. So I'm going to cut through over here at C. So now the value for red is very near its minimum. So it's down here. But blue is almost near its maximum, so it's back up here. And you can see that the slope here has gotten even greater than it was in the middle case. So now we've got a function where the dependence is even more rapid. So we've got an even more rapid variation in how the signal varies versus wavelength, in which wavelengths are near their maximum, which are near their minimum. So now we have, for location C, we have rapid oscillation versus new for the deepest reflector. So if the reflector is deep into the tissue, we see the most rapid oscillation in the interference signal as a function of wavelength. And you can see that in the math here, that if I make x bigger, then I don't need to change nu tilde by as much to increase the argument by a factor of 2 pi. That's why I have a more rapid oscillation here, a shorter period in new tilde if I have a larger value of x. And what's going on here is all of these measurements, notice I never said I was moving the reference mirror. I was just considering different depths at which I could make my measurement in the tissue. So this is a situation where the reference mirror doesn't move. Okay, so suppose we have a tissue here that has reflections happening at various different depths all at the same time. So we measure a total signal at our detector as a function of wavelength. We could think of that as a sum. I'll here I'll write it as a discrete sum of these three different sinusoidal oscillations versus inverse wavelength. We could say it's however reflective A the tissue is at depth xA, the shallowest depth, times that very broad spectral function, which I'll just sketch out conceptually for you here, plus a similar reflectivity at a different depth xb times this fast slightly faster oscillation versus wavelength that we had here in the middle the medium one and obviously a third one at location c where we've got the fastest oscillation which i'll now draw like that. If we make a spectral measurement where we look at the light coming into the detector, we send it out and measure not just the total light intensity hitting the detector, but we measure the spectrum of that light. So intensity as a function of wavelength or inverse wavelength equivalently, we can pull out this vector of numbers, a, as a function of depth, and we can get a of x, which if we can get that, that's the reflectivity profile. And there is a mathematical way, of course, of getting that. You obtain this 
uh, by a Fourier transform of this measurement of intensity as a function of inverse wavelength, that gives you a reflectivity versus depth x. As I said before, the inverse wavelength and the length scale x, the depth, that's a Fourier pair. So if you Fourier transform the measurements that you make as a function of inverse wavelength, you can decompose them and figure out how much of each of these frequencies are present in the spectrum that you measure. And that spectrum will have slow oscillations versus wavelength and medium and fast oscillations. You can then pull out by Fourier transformation what the amplitude is of each one of those oscillations. Those amplitudes are the reflectivity of the tissue at those depths. This is really cool. So the key advantage, in addition to what you can already appreciate, that you didn't have to move the reference mirror, you can just sit at, at a stationary mirror position and measure spectra. It's all done in one shot. All of the light that you're detecting contains information. In the previous case, when we were sweeping the reference mirror, you may recall from the previous tutorial, you saw various bursts when the reference mirror lined up with depths at which the tissue was most highly reflective. But, you're all, but in that geometry as well, all of the light reflecting from all the tissue locations that scatter is all hitting the detector at all times. But only some of the light is useful at each time, the light that matches the path length to the reference mirror. That was in the old way. In the new way, all of the light is flowing into the detector at all times, but because we have not the single measurement, but we discriminate versus wavelength, we make multiple measurements simultaneously, it allows us to use information from all of the depths at the same time. These wiggles that you see here are encod encodings of how much light is reflecting from that depth. This is another case where a oscillation is coding for something else. And there are, the last thing to leave you with is that there are two ways to gather this, this information. We'll talk about this. The one, one way is to use the same sort of source that we were talking about when we were using a broadband source in the previous tutorial. So I would call that a simple source. It's just a source with, a, with enough spectral bandwidth. And the sophisticated thing, which I'll write in capitals, is the spectrometer. So you make multiple measurements. You resolve the light coming to the, detector, to the detector as a function of wavelength. The second option is to have the source be a smart source. It has a single intense wavelength at a time, and that's called a swept source. So you only have one wavelength coming out at a time, but you pour all of your energy into that one source, and versus time, you know what wavelength is coming out. In that case, you can use a simple detector. So you just use a single simple detector, detect all of the power added because you know what wavelength is coming when. These are two ways to implement this different, more complex, but much faster way of doing optical coherence tomography, and that's the way almost all of it is done these days.